Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's been a little while since we've provided a COVID update in our community. So thanks for being here. Uh, I want to thank our healthcare partners for being here again this morning. I'll introduce them in a, in a minute. Uh, March 10, uh, 2021, it's been, uh, well, first off, it's my wife's birthday today. Uh, so happy birthday, honey. Uh, it's also National Ranch Dressing Day, which she was qu quite excited to hear coincided with her birthday. Um, but it's also, uh, in all seriousness, one year that we've been living in this world of COVID. First case of COVID was in Minnehaha County one year ago today. And if you're like me, um, it feels like a lot more than a year. It's hard to imagine our world pre-COVID uh, and, and pre this uh, time we're living in. But the good news is uh, uh, there's so much optimism right now and so many things, numbers, metrics, vaccinations, all moving in positive directions. So uh, I hope you feel an air of optimism by what we're gonna talk about today and that the worst is, is certainly behind us. Uh, I wanna just share some six month uh, data trending here. Um, just to kind of look, where have we been? Where have we been since November? November was, uh, in, in my opinion, and it's everyone's is relative, what was the worst month for you during COVID? November was the worst for me uh, and for our community uh, in terms of cases. And we've seen uh, not only a slow decline and then a leveling off of cases, but a, a tremendous decline in hospitalizations and then a, a flattening. So where we sit today, and we've been hanging right around around that 20 mark between both of our healthcare systems. Um, early on in COVID, this was our number one concern and priority. Would we have to care for people uh, in the gift shop and put hospital beds in a, in a hospital gift shop? Would we have to use parking garage space? Would we have to call in the guards to have a temporary uh, hospital put up? This community managed through all that and managed through it well, and specifically uh, Vera Health and Sanford Health ensured that people who needed care got the care they needed within their hospital systems. And so that's a really, really big point that we need to, to foot stomp, is that we didn't get to a point where other communities around the country got with overflowing their healthcare organizations. The surge planning worked, um, the staffing planning worked, uh, and that doesn't happen by accident. So they did an incredible, incredible job over the past year in ensuring at these peaks, everyone who got care. And again, just COVID care right here. Their true hospitalizations are much higher than this. All those people got the care uh, that they needed. Uh, you know, what's not shown in this is the toll that uh, um, this has taken on people's emotional and mental health. Uh, was highlighted again for me last night at a city council meeting. Uh, the temperature in the room, and I'm not talking the actual temperature, I'm talking the tenor of people. There's a lot of mental fragility in, in the community still from this, and there will be for some time. And, um, and I think that's going to be something that we're gonna be working through long past where we end with, with COVID here uh, is repairing relationships damage uh, the 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 dialogue chasm that's grown quite wide in certain circles how do we build those bridges and get that back together and some would say it's it's related to masks last night the council um five four voted against extending that this uh, existing mask mandate uh, i was put in a position to have to break the tie uh, again it was not my ordinance to be brought forward um, but uh, was put in the position to have to break that tie. Tough, tough decision, you know, and uh, uh, a quote I've used, I, I actually shared it with a reporter last week, is uh, leadership is disappointing people at a rate they can accept. <laughs> and that's been kind of a theme, it seems like this past year, uh, in that there's always two decisions and there's very two very strong opinions on all sides of, of these issues. But despite the fact that we're moving on from, from mandated masking, it's my you know, expectation that people will still continue to wear masks in public settings and in businesses. 
well, not required or mandated. I know personally my behavior patterns are not going to change uh, until we get a little further down in the vaccination schedule and so forth. To me, it's a very minor thing, but to other people, it's a very major thing. And so this mandate, I think we'll, uh, lifting that, we'll respect that. We'll respect people's positions on that. Uh, but my behavior won't change, nor uh, should the community's behavior, uh, mandate or not. Uh, I would also expect a lot of our businesses will continue to keep um, uh, certain policies in place for their business. So I would just ask the community, respect the policies of, of the business community, a business owner. Um, if they feel that they want to have masks required in their business, please respect that, uh, abide by that. Uh, and if um, you can't for some reason wear a mask, and I would ask you to patronize a different business uh, where you can do that. Uh, we also passed a resolution last night as a council. Uh, that was a unanimous 8-0 vote. And that just shows us uh, kind of a sign of solidarity towards what I just mentioned, that masking is still important, social distancing is still important, all the mitigation strategies are still important. Because while we're, while we're low, obviously, COVID's still here. We're still coexisting with COVID. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned last night, I think we're at the five-yard line, to use a football analogy. But uh, if you've played football, the last five yards, those are the hardest five yards, you know. And that's when the defense is at its best, is in the, is in the end. So um, we're close. Uh, so I have a level of optimism right now in the community that, uh, I haven't had in a long time. I'm seeing it a lot in the community with all the vaccines that are being given. I'm seeing people out and about and who are talking to me who have expressed a newfound confidence in, uh, in being involved in their community that they haven't had uh, in the last year, thanks to the incredible work that our healthcare partners have done in getting these vaccinations out and out quickly. Uh, we continue to remain uh, in 1D, which uh, I'm sure we'll, the, these folks will talk about. Um, we actually, you can extend this because in the blue box, I know teachers are also starting to get vaccines through uh, some, some federal allocations and uh, programs there. Uh, and the next step will be 1E. So if you look at the most vulnerable populations that we've seen over the last year for who are most at risk for hospitalization and most at risk for death, it's the elderly and the people with the underlying health conditions, the group 1B, in the long-term care facilities and the group 1D. And so, man, there will be a big sigh of relief when we can move on to 1E and say, all right, we've taken care of our most vulnerable people with this vaccine and we can move on as a community. So with that, uh, I am going to turn it over to uh, my right-hand man uh, for this past year on a lot of fronts, uh, Dr. Mike Elliott, uh, Chief Medical Officer at uh, Avera McKenna. Mike? Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate those comments. Um, again, my name is Mike Elliott. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Avera McKinnon Hospital. Um, hope and optimism, as the Mayor said, are definitely appropriate. This last year has felt like, I don't know, a decade. Uh, it, it's, it's taken its toll on everyone. There is just simply no possible way that you come through this unscathed. Um, one of the benefits uh, for me of working within the Avera Health System is regularly in the emails that we get and, and talking with Sister Mary and, and the other mission folks within our organization, we come across things that, uh, that I find very uplifting. I wanted to share a simple prayer that uh, came across an email. It was, it was just attached to the email, nothing special, but it spoke to me and, and my hope is it'll speak to you as well. God, during this pandemic, we have tested, treated, vaccinated, and educated thousands of patients. Please bless them, bless those who cared for them, and bless our families who remain steadfast each day. During this pandemic, we have lost so many patients. Please comfort their families and comfort those who cared for them. During this pandemic, we have journeyed through grief, stress. We've even had some triumph and joy. Please continue to hold our hands when we need comfort, provide strength when we are weak, and show us light when all we see is darkness. As we journey through the rest of this pandemic, our hope is renewed 
and our gratitude is immeasurable because we know you walk with us always. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So as the mayor said, a year ago today, the first novel coronavirus case was confirmed uh, here in Minnehaha County in the state of South Dakota. Um, what a year it's been. And even prior to that, uh, clinics, hospitals, health systems were planning. For what? We didn't really know. Uh, we saw the numbers going up uh, on the other side of the ocean. Um, we saw what was happening in New York. We tried to extrapolate that information to try to plan on what we might see here. Um, it reminded many of us of uh, trying to build a plane while we were flying it, except we didn't have an instruction manual. And the flight plan, well, we had to make that up as we went along. And information came in a flurry. Uh, different organizations had different ideas. Some research studies were showing one thing, other research studies were showing another thing, trying to assimilate all that data and make the best decisions we could when we were pressed to do so in a very time-constrained uh, uh, environment was, was a challenge on all of us. Um, I'm proud to work for, uh, for Avera. I'm proud to partner with Stanford and the City Health Department here in Sioux Falls and the mayor and the city council and made a lot of friends over this last year, have developed a lot of wonderful partnerships. Uh, the mayor talked a little bit about vaccines you know, that is, that is our one glowing hope right now. It is our, our most direct path forward. Avera, uh, by the end of this week, will have uh, given roughly 60,000 vaccines. Um, we, for those that are getting a Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, uh, about 96% of those that got the first dose are returning for the second dose. Johnson & Johnson is now here, and uh, as you know, that's a single-dose vaccine, and we are working with our partners to figure out which groups of folks would be ideally suited for that, uh, that single-dose vaccine, and how can we best do that. Along with that, we've had help from the retail pharmacies who have stepped up and begun to give vaccines. So there's more choice for folks now, and I expect that to continue as we go forward. Um, Beyond the vaccines, you know, there's um, so many things that have happened over this past year. And I wrote just a, a couple down just to, um, you know, give you a flavor of what's happened. You, you all probably know uh, Avera McKinnon, Avera Health has had a robust telemedicine platform uh, long before the pandemic started. Uh, and we were able to use that technology, uh, countless number of telemedicine visits we were able to put board certified intensive care physicians, emergency room doctors, hospitalists in some of our small communities virtually and able to take care of patients um, in, in, a, in a very well orchestrated uh, manner. We had a, a humble uh, call center, a nurse call center. People could call in and ask questions, get help. We turned that into a COVID hotline uh, that was taking thousands upon thousands of calls and giving people direction and help on what to do with their symptoms, when they should be seeking help, what they could do at home to keep themselves safe. We turned an ED garage into a community uh, site for sample collections. Um, I guarantee you when we designed that garage, we never had that in mind. Um, but yet, there we were. Um, research, research infrastructure. You know, we're kind of quiet on that, um, but yet the research infrastructure we had in place helped us immensely. Our research lab was the first lab in the region to run PCR COVID tests. Uh, and that's because it was already set up and it was there. We just had to, this is gonna sound way too easy. It wasn't as easy as flipping a switch. But we flipped a switch and we turned a research lab into a COVID lab. Our research infrastructure allowed us to bring things to the community faster than they ever would have come otherwise. 
through research efforts, we were able to bring convalescent plasma trials to this region. We were able to bring monoclonal antibody trials to this region long before they received their emergency use authorization from the FDA. So then when those EUAs did come forward, we were already ready and poised and could get it out to our patients in, in a timely fashion. There was a time, right, October, November, early part of December, we were busting at the seams. Um, we were full. Uh, normal 24-bed ICU, and we had 60 critical care patients, and probably others that on any other given day would have qualified for an ICU, but were being taken care of in places that we never imagined we would be taking care of ICU patients. And yet we did that, we did that well. Our, our patients got great care. Um, so proud, so proud of our physicians and our nurses and all of our staff for what they did. Our home care, maybe it's hard to think about what the impact of that was, but at the peak of this, they were taking care of over 1,400 patients a day. Over 400 of those patients required oxygen. If we didn't have a Vera at home and the COVID hotline and the ability to follow up with those folks, where do you think they would have been? Maybe in a bed in our gift shop. Um, so uh, my hat goes off to all of the people that uh, helped uh, orchestrate this Avera at home network and build it up to what it was. And I would be remiss if I didn't say a sincere thanks to our people, each and every one of them. We asked them to do things they never would have thought were in their job description or even possible. We ask people to go to locations in hospitals and clinics they don't normally go to, do things they don't normally do, and they did it. They did it with grace and dignity and enthusiasm. They knew we were all in this together and the only way to get through this was to do it together. So my hat's off to all of them. My final uh, message, get vaccinated. Please keep doing the mitigation strategies. Those things work, those things matter. They're gonna help us cross the goal line. Uh, so thank you for everything that this community is doing to help uh, our family, friends, and neighbors get through this. It is much appreciated. Your efforts certainly are not lost on us. At this point in time, I will turn it over to my colleague Kelly from Samford for her comments. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Kelly Hefty and I'm the Vice President of Nursing and Clinical Services at Sanford and I'm honored to be with you this morning. It is difficult for me to fathom that, the one, that it's a one year anniversary since our first case of COVID in South Dakota and that the COVID-19 pandemic became a lo local reality for us. I want to start by extending my sincere gratitude to our healthcare workers, our patients and our community partners First, our healthcare workers, you are truly healthcare heroes. These healthcare heroes made arrangements to stay at hotels with coworkers who were working in the COVID units to ensure that their families uh, did not obtain the virus. They spent the year working shifts and extra shifts to care for our patients in their greatest time of need. Many employees stepped out of their usual jobs and were cross-trained, so we had capacity to care for our increased COVID numbers. They have shown resiliency, grit, and grace. Grace for others and grace for themselves as they learn to expect the unexpected. To our patients, we thank you for allowing us to care for you, for trusting us to deliver care when you needed it most. You motivated and challenged us to be our very best, starting with drive-through testing, newly identified treatment options like antibody infusions, and most recently vaccinations. We also, however, want to remember and honor the lives of our patients that did not survive this virus. We recognize these losses and keep your families close in our hearts. To our community partners for standing shoulder to shoulder to inform, educate, and address the demands that a global pandemic brought to our communities. 
We want to recognize the generosity that was shown in support of our health care workers. The well wishes, the personal cards from school-aged children, gift cards, personal items and food deliveries to staff at the hospitals, clinics, testing locations, and vaccination centers. In our large rural state, we are grateful for our network of critical access hospitals, the staff in those facilities and the communities that support them. We were better able to meet the demands and needs to allow our patients to receive their care close to home. Your local services, both for COVID and non-COVID patients, helped us manage all of these volumes. We spend years, sometimes even decades, in preparedness efforts for things like a natural disaster or a global pandemic, never really thinking, or at least hoping, we will never have to execute. Our preparedness efforts proved invaluable. In one year, we've gone from calling our communities to sew masks, closing schools, and installing plexiglass barriers in hospitals, schools, and businesses. And today, across our Sanford Health footprint, we have administered nearly 140,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine. Our couriers drive hundreds of miles each day to deliver vaccine to our rural communities in South Dakota. As we look ahead to the future, we are beyond grateful that there are several vaccines already being administered to millions of people across the country. The work to done to develop these safe and effective vaccines has been inspiring. Getting a vaccine is critical to ensure your health and safety and the health and safety of those we serve. The COVID vaccine, a shot of hope, gives us reason to be optimistic as our vaccine numbers increase that we will be able to return to some sense of normalcy. But until then, we should remain diligent and continue to wear masks, wash our hands frequently, seek care when we are sick, and so social distance when around others. Thank you, Mayor Paul, for giving me the opportunity to be with you today. And I'll open it up, I think, if we may have some questions. All right. Thank you, Dr. Elliott. Thank you, Kelly, for being here as well. We will take any questions anyone might have for uh, either of or any of us today. Go ahead. I guess for all three, I guess, focusing on the local government, what are some lessons learned right now after the tornado? You can point to some, some simple object things. Is there anything like that that stands out that you've learned in a year that we had a weakness here, we had to do something, anything like that? Well, I would I will speak actually more to more to a strength, and that's the strength of uh, community partnerships. You know, like this. So having um, it's it's a, it's a little rare to see Sanford and Avera locking arms together for a single initiative. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you know, they're competitors, as we all know, and to see them unified for a singular cause uh, of public health and helping our community has been inc incredibly encouraging. I don't know how we would have got through this if there was divisiveness in the ranks between our health care partners. And so that unity has been very, very beneficial to this community in helping get those numbers where they're at. Um, you know, an area where we can always improve, I think, is um, in the way that we have public discourse around these issues. That's been probably my biggest frustration point and my biggest disappointment in the community is the unwillingness to... Uh, well, you know, listen to other people's opinions, uh, seek first to understand, then to be understood, you know, and a lot of people go right to understand me. I don't want to understand your issue. And I think we can do we can do better on that. And I say we, I say me, I say all of us. So hopefully this has opened people's eyes to a little bit more empathy that they maybe need to have for their neighbor uh, in the event of some difficult times because everybody is dealing with this in a different way. To some people, it's not even a real thing. To other people, they literally have not left their apartment for almost a year. And there's a whole spectrum in between. So we have to be empathetic to that fact that there's no right or wrong way to handle things like this. And we as leaders and as you know, community residents have to be uh, uh, sympathetic to everyone's different positions. Any, anything you guys need to add on that? 
I was just going to say, apparently the mayor and I have spent a lot of time together because those were exactly the two things that I was going to lift up. The partnerships um, have been incredible over this past year. We couldn't have done this without the, the partnerships, the city health department, the mayor and his office, Sanford, the state monument, even on the other side of the state, reaching out to us, make sure that we're coordinating our efforts, making sure we're trying to get vaccines to the right groups at the right time. Um, it's been huge. With, without that partnership, huh, this would have been a mess. And yeah, um, you know, on the heels of local and regional floods, and then a tornado, and the fact that we had to stand up a behavioral health hospital in 24 hours, um, to then uh, get notified that, well, we've got a global pandemic knocking on the door. Um, we collectively have been through a lot. Um, I think if we allow ourselves time to, to grieve and to heal uh, from this, we can come through this stronger. Um, but some of the negativity, uh, the, the, the discourse, uh, as the mayor said, um, is worrisome. I hope we can find a way going forward to remember to treat everyone with respect. Just because you and I may not agree on something doesn't mean you or I are any more or less of a person. We just simply have different views. That's okay. In fact, that's a good thing. The only, I'm forgetting the exact quote, but the idea that the most dangerous idea I will ever have is when it is the only idea I have, something to that effect. We should be welcoming different viewpoints. We can learn from that. We can all improve from that. I hope that's something we can improve upon as we, uh, we move forward and we heal from this. Yep, yeah, thanks Mike. Other, other questions? Yeah, Tom. Absolutely. I think one of the um, probably most uh, profound examples right now is, is a personal example for Sanford in our Good Samaritan societies. We know how the illness and the virus truly affected the elderly, especially in our long-term care facilities. And as uh, we're spread across uh, 20 plus states across the United States, we have an 80% plus vaccination rate among the, our, our long-term care residents. And we, um, last week at a particular point in time, had zero positive cases in our Good Samaritan centers. And that number obviously fluctuates a little bit day to day and week to week. But the ability for those long-term care residents to be able to connect with their families again, to have the personal interaction that they need to thrive in the environment that they're in, I think it's just a great example of what vaccines can do to help us get back to some sense of normalcy. I encourage people that are not sure about the vaccine to ask questions, clarify um, what your concerns are if, if it's the side effect pro profile or the efficacy. Seek out your healthcare provider and ask those questions so you can make an informed decision. And don't use Google instead, right? <laughs> Talk to your doctor. All right, other questions? All right, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for all your coverage this past year. Uh, you guys have been a critical piece of keeping our community informed and that's um, not lost on us. So thanks for the work you've done to keep the community engaged and informed on what's going on and I wish you a healthy uh, rest of 21. Thanks.